the moment. <laughs> Apparently it is. It's very warm here at the moment. Yeah, so which I is... think they're enjoying the heat. Yeah, and great for the Australian riders, isn't it? Really, they're, and they're shining at the moment, Anna. Absolutely. The Aussie riders have had lots of racing throughout the festive season leading into the new year, but they won't have it their own way. Lots of internationals here. 15 teams, four domestic Australian teams, including Mitchelton Scott. And Kate, we should mention too, we say the field gets better and better every year, but this is an incredible field. This is the best ever. Well, it's been incredible to watch it grow because year on year we keep saying, wow, what a field we have. But this year we can actually say it's the world's best. And even better, the Aussies are going really well. So I think it's really special for the Australians to perform in front of the international riders in front of family, on home soil and come out on top. And they've had three days out on the road already. We've had three road stages. Today they're on the tight street circuit for the SouthAustralia.com stage four of this event. But the first three days have been amazing. They have been amazing, not just for the riders. The circuits have been quite technical. You know, the race director, Kimberly Conti, has you know, picked some great circuits out there, Kate, for the women as we see some of the footage from racing. Well, they've raced about 340 kilometres so far. Our first Oka jersey went to Paternoster, the young Italian, just a superstar. I mean, and She's used Australia to be the springboard for what is going to be an incredible career moving forward. Uh, but Amanda Spratt and Mitchelton Scott, well, big things we've seen this week and more to come today. Been very commanding barrettes, but we also had some really hot weather conditions for the women. 39 degrees for stage two at Mangler's Hill, a precursor for what we're going to see in the men's tour coming up. Really earning their money at the moment. We should mention too, prize money equal for men and women this year, Kate. Oh, isn't that amazing? I mean, it, it's been happening across all sports, uh, but for Australia and here in Adelaide, to do it in women's cycling. It's, it's hard to explain just how important that is in cycling. It doesn't happen. You know, we're one of the sports that has sometimes been back in the dinosaur ages. And so I think it's it's a really big honour for the women to be able to know that they come in here with full respect. Yeah, and Anna, for the young Australians coming up, it, it's this is a big springboard, this event. Absolutely. What better place to be able to use a UCI uh, race to kick off the season, to get their names out there and connect with the fans as well. All right, let's get you up to speed with what's been happening over the first three stages of the Santos Women's Tour Down Under. Cool conditions greeted the teams for Zip Trek Stage 1, 112.9 kilometres from the iconic town of Harndorf to Birdwood in the Adelaide Hills. With a downhill run to the finish, this would be a day for the sprinters. At the 34 kilometre mark, LA Cipollini's Chloe Hosking hit the afterburners, taking the points in the first drag race of the season. The Queen of the Mountain would go to Ale Cipollini's Nadia Cogliotto. The run into Birdwood and the favourites were in the mix. It's getting hectic in the bunch and oh, a clip of wheels and a rider goes down. Well, the sprint is always hectic and it starts in honour for the Mitchelton Scott girls leading the way. Rebecca Wyasak comes up the outside in the UDSA colours. She's accelerating, but it's the youngster from Trek Sagafredo riding away, Letizia Paternoster, the 19-year-old, and she takes the win. The Trek Segafredo rider in the Oka jersey. 116 kilometres of racing and temperatures in the mid-30s greeted the riders for Novatec Stage 2. This would be a day for the climbers and the daunting Category 1 climb to the finish at Mengler Hill. With the front runners at breaking point, the defending champion made her move. Amanda Spratt, she comes up to her own teammate Lucy Kennedy and she goes straight past. Well, this is textbook perfect riding from the Mitchelton Scott team. And Amanda Spratt, she took this victory in 2018. It sealed the overall for that Oka jersey and it looks like she's going to do it again. The rider from the Blue Mountains in New South Wales. And there she does it. A new leader after a day some wished had finished at the bottom of the climb. All eyes were on the Mitchelton Scott team for Subaru Stage 3. 104.5 kilometres of racing from Nan to Stirling. In the sprint competition, LA Cipollini's Chloe Hosking once again showed she'll be a force in this year's world tour. Dolcini team rider Tetiana Ryabchenko went on the offensive, getting the jump on the peloton to stay in contention for the climbing competition. Into the town of Stirling for the final 12 kilometre loop, Alison Jackson from Team Tipco got to the line to move into second place in the sprint category. The final dash for home, a gruelling uphill climb. Grace Brown, she's literally just riding away from them. Well, they did it on stage two, and it looks like stage three will be the Mitchelton show again. Grace Brown takes the win. With just one stage remaining, can anyone challenge the race leader on the streets of Adelaide? So it's all come down to this, the SouthAustralia.com stage four. 
of the Santos Women's Tour down under. Here's how they stand. Australia's Amanda Spratt. Can she do it once again? That'll be the big question this afternoon. But remember, there is still a battle on for those podium positions. None of these places are yet locked in. None are decided. And it is going to be a thrilling afternoon as we look forward to spectacular racing in very, very warm conditions. Once again, the crowd are making their way down through the city now and to the sidelines, the barriers for this racing. They love it here. People have come not only from across South Australia, from across Australia and from right around the world to enjoy this spectacle. This is the largest and the most prestigious cycling event in the Southern Hemisphere and it kicks off the World Tour year. 11 days of cycling, a massive party atmosphere showcasing not only the best of the world cycling but also the best of South Australian food, wine and some great experiences on offer. Over our coverage across the next week here on 7, you are going to see some magnificent locations. But right now, Kate and Anna have made their way to the commentary box. Let's join the international voice of cycling, Phil Liggett. Thank you very much, Mark, and the situation at the moment. Thank you very much, Mark, and the race situation. As you can see, the girls are on the stop. been here for 16 years. She's a warm one as we head into stage four from Bartels Road. It'll be a very exciting race. And this is the circuit. It's a straightforward circuit. It's a left-handed course all the way. There's no hills and so there's no queen of the mountains today. Just a battle for the sprint which is tightly poised and of course the final ochre jersey. A 1.2 kilometre lap and uh, the riders very often are fighting for position especially around this second last corner heading onto East Terrace and it's quite a sweeping corner back onto Bartels Road and a very tight run into the finish it's always fast and furious and if any if last she was anything to go by I think we're up for a bit of a show. So that's straight along Bartels Road towards the finish here that's where Amanda Spratt had a fall last year but she got up and still won the race. There they are look a very small feel when they're down there but they're nice compact in the start uh, the flags hardly a ripple. We were promised winds of up to 40 kilometres an hour uh, this morning at the crack of dawn. It hasn't materialised and it's a pretty hot day. Well, it's hot out on course and the riders, well, they're used to it by now, Phil, because it's been pretty scorching hot out on course uh, all week. The Europeans, I've got to say, they haven't been loving it too much, but it plays right into the strength of the Australians. Uh, leading in today, Amanda Spratt, the Australian, champion from 2017 and 18 and she's wearing the ochre jersey nearest camera there as they get the countdown is Nadia Cagliotto the Italian girl with the blue spotted white jersey of Queen of the Mountains and wearing the sprinters jersey the zip track sprinters jersey is Sarah Roy the Mitchelton Scott rider and Jamie Gunning has the young riders jersey from specialized women's racing a lot of motivated teams out there today, Anna. It's time for the sprinters. Absolutely. 15 teams in total for domestic riders. As we see right off the get-go, we've got an attack. And that's Sydney Uni Staminate. All week they've been, well, they've really been the protagonist. They've tried to get some moves going. They've had a couple of riders in falls. It hasn't really slowed them down. Uh, they've continued to animate the race. And quite honestly, I think we are up for the sprinters today, but I don't think they're going to make it easy for them out there. No, absolutely not. It has been a very animated race, like you said, Kate. Lots of flurry of activity off the front, people trying to get away. Mitchelton Scott have done a very good job in controlling a lot of the moves and bringing them back and the breaks that we've seen. Uh, but as we see today, today there's no Queen of the Mountain, Subaru Queen of the Mountain. It'll be one for the sprinters. It's an interesting psychology uh, going into the final stage. On each of the occasions this week, Anna, we asked them, the sprinters, how they were feeling leading into the hill climb stages and the climbers how they were feeling leading into the sprint stages and a really common theme about how they were feeling is stressed and anxious. The sprinters to get up the climbs were worried about the pressure of that and today I know that the climbers are just trying to stay safe and stay out of trouble. Well absolutely as a sprinter myself in a different field obviously once we get a sniff of the finish even though no matter what nerves and anxiety you might carry into the start of the race as soon as you get a whiff of that finish you, you, you feel a lot better don't you feel? <laughs> Well, you do, and we're watching them complete the circuit now. It's a 1.7 kilometre circuit, we're covering 25 times, a total of 42.5 kilometres. They've got off to a very fast start here, but it's very difficult to control the pace on it's a day like this. They're going to go fast, and that's the way it's going to be. Well, and every team is out there to get some kind of a result. This is their last chance to do so. They've got absolutely nothing to use, um, to lose. CCC Live, the very, very bright orange jerseys out there, 
They're one of the world's absolute best teams, but gee, they've struggled in the heat this week. They have, and you can see when the pace is on, the peloton is just strung out. And if you're caught at the back of the bunch, it's really, really hard to move your progression further well, it's, forward. It's like an elastic band. You know, the gaps open up one little bit at a time, and bit by bit, it just gets harder to close those tiny little gaps. Rebecca Wysak sitting on the back. Phil, the back is not the place she wants to be. No, it certainly is not, and especially she wears the number of the most competitive rider in the event there, a red number. But this is the home straight, end of the lap, 24 circuits to go. There are three zip track sprints along the way at the end of lap 6, 12 and 18. And that's a far from done competition for Sarah Roy because there's only two points separating the top two. Well, they've got a double agenda out there, the sprinters. Sarah Roy and Chloe Hosking both going for that zip track sprint jersey, but they're also going for the stage. And at what point do they decide one over the other? So I think we can expect to see them competing for those sprint points early. If Roy can pick up enough points that she feels confident in taking the overall, I think she might sit back and let you know get a little bit of rest, but I don't know that Chloe will, will uh, let that happen. And you add a slight complication into that is that Sarah Roy is actually from Mitchelton Scott, who are riding in protection of the Oka jersey leader, Amanda Spratt. Well, and to make it even more complicated, our winner from day one, the young Italian, Paternosta, well, she's not going for the sprint jersey, so she's just going to be sitting and looking after herself. She'll be fresh as a daisy come the final lap. Uh, Absolutely. Keep an eye out for her in the um, Trek Segafredo team. She's a dual junior world champion from 2017. Like you said, only 19 years of age, but she wasn't intimidated at all by the women on stage And Anna, just like us, she's a trackie. Yeah, go the trackie. <laughs> oh, nobody's intimidated. <laughs> Trackies aren't intimidated, right? You weren't intimidated when you... We did uh... the intimidating, Kate. <laughs> yeah. well, I can I feel the fight uh, building up here. I think maybe I, you actually, did more than I I've never commentated it with two women before. I, I'm enjoying listening to you. And two think. trackies, Phil? Two track riders at the same time. Oh, my goodness. Very aggressive people. I remember Annie. <laughs> Your great, your great track exploits against Victoria Pendleton at the Olympic Games and the World Championships. I also remember when you called great them. Great storyline. Thank you. <laughs> you can't see us at the moment, but we've elbow to elbow in the commentary box. <laughs> well, these criteriums, <laughs> right. they're great for the track riders, uh, but also the roadies have a bit of fun with this because it's a format that's not often used in Europe. Uh, it's very popular in Australia and also in America. So the Americans, they have a very strong criterium circuit and they're quite happy about the course out there today. Rally UHC, they're a team of motivated riders and all week they've been saying that they're not here to lay down. They're not on their fittest form, but they're certainly not here to let Mitchelton Scott ride away with the race. No, absolutely not. And, uh, you know, everyone's here to win, especially for the first race of the season, the first um, UCI-ranked race of the season. Many of these teams have never actually been around before, so it's wonderful to see the depth growing. Coming up towards the end of lap number two, first lap competed in a very quick two minutes 35, but remember that was uh, from a standing start, they're going to better that. Actually, I'm not so sure they are as they're swinging around, they're going out in a year. It was founded by Colonel Light back in 1836, and his plan for a beautiful city surrounded by parklands has evolved to see elegant 19th century sandstone architecture stand opposite edgy bohemian laneways. In 2018, Adelaide was voted as one of the world's top 10 most friendly cities, probably because it's surrounded by some of the most accessible wine country any capital city has to offer. And it's lined too to the west by exquisite white sandy beaches, perfectly positioned to watch the evening sun set. Well, that's enough to put anyone in a good mood as we rejoin the action here now in the final stage of the Santos Women's Tour Down Under. Day four for these women, and they are ripping around this course. We've just had an attack by Elisa Fraser, the 30-year-old New Zealand rider. But looking at the pictures, uh, Kate, it looks as though she's back in the pack. Oh, back in the pack. I'm not surprised. She was one out, and uh, it's very hard for a single rider to survive out on course, especially with the likes of Mitchelton Scott and Trek Segafredo, very, very motivated for a sprint. We've also got a very interesting race going on for overall here, Phil, because UniSA rider Rachel Nalen, well, she's tied in third place with a rally UHC rider. Mm. Their, ride, their team just tapping off the front now, Krista Doble Highcock and Rachel Nalen, both on 55 seconds. So if neither of those riders can gain any points in the intermediate sprints, and to be honest, Anna, we don't expect them to, then it will come down to who crosses the line first. So we've got two 
essentially climbers uh, who will have to sprint in that final uh, for who gets over the line first. So lots of interesting action out there. Absolutely. As it stands, Rachel Nayland crossed the line ahead of Hickok yesterday. So even though they are on equal footing for third place currently on the road, it would be Rachel Nayland in the lead. Well, the field doesn't look too motivated uh, to really continue to get a breakaway or make these attacks. We've seen some solo attacks, Phil, but, you know, on this course... Out of the speed, too. We've just never had a solo rider survive no. in this kind of conditions. No, it's all about weakening the other team sprinters with high-speed racing, try and put them into a position where they can't and work their way through the big peloton. Uh, but the pressure is always on. Mitchelton Scott are taking responsibility, but UniSA riding for Rachel Nalen and trying to sneak onto that podium spot. They're up the front as well. Anya Lowe, the race's youngest rider, the young Tasmanian. She's I think got her nose in the wind. Might have double plan today. We see Rebecca Wysak down the back of the peloton. Rachel Nalen up the front. Now they're both teammates. Rebecca Wysak, the national criterium champion, only recently in Victoria. Yep. So interesting to see how these tactics will play out. Rebecca still sitting, uh, we call it the ticket collector's position, right at the back of the train there. Uh, but yes, she is the circuit race champion. She won her title in Bunningyong uh, just a week or so ago. Probably nearly two weeks now, time flies. And uh, still under blue skies here. It's an extraordinarily nice day in Bunningyong too. In Ballarat, I beg your pardon. On Sydney Uni Staminate on the move again. Georgia Whitehouse having an attack. The field not responding immediately. But it would be tough going out there on your own. Sometimes, Anna, you, t you make these attacks and you turn around and realise nobody's with you and you kind of have an oh kind of moment where you think, oh, really, I could really do with some company out here. Um, but Anna Booth, that is, and she's charging for the line. She's certainly making the most of it. In many ways, this is your shot. Even if you didn't want to be out there on your own, this is your shot. And it's a bell lap. They'll come around for the sprint on the next lap to get both points. Now, this is a very important lap for that sprint jersey for Mitchelton Scott and for Chloe Hosking of Arle Cipollini. That's right, because only two points are separate uh, Sarah Roy and Alison Jackson. Chloe Hoskins is 46 points back, but you get 20 points if you win the sprint next time around. So there's three sprints plus the finish, and if you win the finish, you get 45 points. And Chloe Hoskins won this race last year. So if they've got it all worked out mathematically, it could very certainly change and so let's see how they start to pack up uh, for this sprint here. Team starting to get organised at the front of the peloton as we still see Anna Booth from the Sydney Uni Staminade team still out front. This can also play into the hands of some of the riders if she takes away some of the points on available. Well, these domestic teams have been super gutsy and super impressive. They haven't at all been intimidated by the might of the international field, which I think is fairly impressive. Tibco Silicon Bank... They are taking responsibility on the front of the field. Alison Jackson, she picked up some points in yesterday's sprint, and it is tight in that zip track sprint competition. So they're going for every single point they can get. There's quite a number of them out there today, so it can make a real impact. I'll tell you what, the Silicon Valley Bank, uh, the Tipico squad here, the owner of the team, Linda Jackson, arrived yesterday. She was a little bit too tired to go to the team presentation in Victoria Square. She sent me a, an overnight text to say she was definitely going to be here today and wanted action from the team. So we'll see. Well, they finished second uh, in the GC last year with Lauren Stevens. Yeah, and they had a good result before the race started with Shannon, Shannon Malseed, who got the contract on the squad uh, last year. And she's uh, here again this time around. It's fabulous to see the international teams come here and ready to race. Anna Booth She's still got a slight advantage over the field. Tipco Silicon Valley Bank making quite a strong chase. Chloe Hosking up front there, following wheels through. UniSA starting to get things all together too, and the speed is up high. Now, this is interesting. If Rachel Nayland sprints and can get even a single second, that can push her into third on the podium overall. And I think UniSA are looking to do that. She's sitting in third wheel. She's the blonde-haired rider accelerating now. Lauren Kitchen in front. But Chloe Hosking is moving ahead for the sprint. Doble Highcock on the orange in the left. Oh, now that was a tight competition. Hosking certainly got second. But was it Naylan no, or Doble Highcock with third? Hosking won that. She got it first. And Rachel Naylan over in second wheel. And so that's a good result for Chloe Hosking. Still a bit of work to close down, but there's 20 points for her there. 
If that is confirmed, she certainly had no trouble winning that sprint. Very nice dress rehearsal for the finishing sprint as well. But we've got two more out on course as well. As the UniSA women here settle in. Back Lauren, to normal on lap number seven. Lauren Kitchen on the front there and Rachel Nayland just having a gel and settling down. She gets a little bit anxious uh, when she's in a bunch sprint. So looking back at the sprint, Uni SA really taking responsibility. Lauren Kitchen opening the sprint up. Rachel Nalen on the left. Chloe Hosking ducking up the middle. Very clearly taking the victory. Oh, Nalen in second. Doble Highcock in third. That virtually puts Rachel Nalen on the podium in third. Whoa. Very, very valuable points there for Rachel Nalen. You can see Chloe Hosking, the more natural sprinter. She takes a little bit of argy-bargy. She doesn't mind the close rubbing and racing arm to arm with Rachel Nalen. Two Aussies on opposing teams there. Uh, the win going to Chloe Hosking, second to Rachel Nalen, and Hickok taking out third points in the, in the zip track first intermediate sprint. competition within a competition and it's really good to see Nalen going against you know her strengths and her comfort necessarily to really push for that podium and the field all together strung out the speed is reasonably high it neutralizes attack center when it they does. keep the pace high like that so the long thin line we're out onto lap number seven of 25 here for the women and Chloe Hoskin, the winner of the race a year ago, is now looking forward. Wonderful spectacle to be a part of as we see again, Kate, a flurry of activity off the front of the peloton. Well, it's the Portuguese champion we've got off the front there, Daniela Reese riding for DVC Cycling. She's got Colioto on her wheel, our Queen of the Mountain, current Queen of the Mountain. Not really a day we'd expect to see the Queen of the Mountain uh, off the front, but Anna, I think Ali Cipollini you know, they really need to look after Chloe Hosking. And one way to do that is to send one of their riders off the front because then they, there's no responsibility for them. They don't have to chase. And it puts the responsibility firmly on the race leaders of Mitchelton Scott and also on UniSA, uh, who are still trying to get Rachel Nalen up there uh, on the podium. Well, as we enjoy our lovely warm summer's afternoon here in Adelaide, it won't be too hot for the riders at the moment. It might be a little bit hot for the spectators. They're keeping themselves quite cool. Been a lot of action when you think about this race. A lot of the riders planning tactics here to try and move themselves up the overall a zip track points qualification and of course the final result as well it's interesting to watch how the tactics are playing out here because it's very on off mm. the little attacks are going only usually with one or two riders the field stringing out catching them back it comes back together it bunches up this is a little bit dangerous for mitchelson scott because it means that they have to keep chasing attacks and they have to keep jumping and same for uni sa I would always prefer in this kind of scenario to keep the pace a little bit high and to neutralise those attacks. It is still early in the day, Anna. Yeah, well, we, well there are two things that can come out of this. Firstly, this yo-yo effect, on, off, on, off. It can hurt the legs. And some of the sprinters, they don't want that. So consistency is the better option. If they can send riders down the road to keep it consistent, they would opt for that. Also, what it does when bunches when the peloton bunches up like this, we can have a risk of accidents and crashes because as you can see, the close proximity of all the riders, a slight clip of the wheel and a lot of them go down. Well, it wouldn't be the first time that that would happen if there was an accident uh, out there. Certainly the women's field has had a couple of accidents so far this year, but you do want to see the riders get through very safely. Even on this circuit, Kate, we saw last year, we're almost looking at a deja vu situation here. The Oka leader jersey of Amanda Spratt from Mitchelton Scott, she was in the same position last year, but she herself got caught up in a crash. Well, as well as Lauren Stevens, who was sitting second on the general classification, imagine that, one and two go down. Your heart is absolutely in your chest. And at the end of the race, Amanda Spratt was shaking. She was just tremendously relieved to have gotten to the finish and to have won but couldn't believe that she saw it all flashed before her face uh, while she was out there I think Amanda's very keen to keep safe today Phil we don't ever want to see the leader's jersey go down no and uh, that was a real shock last day uh, and I thought she'd blown it big time but she got back but uh, Lucy Kennedy's been the the woman on the Mitchelson Scott team that was on the front there when we went out on this next lap and she's just keeping a very consistent pace with the help of a few of the other riders here. Another lap of 2 minutes 35 and it's virtually within a second every time they come around. Well consistent speed and we can see the riders, a lot of them freewheeling 
uh, which is to say that the pace isn't too high uh, when the riders are taking a little bit of recovery like this and just cruising, albeit at the back of the field. It does indicate that the front of the field isn't racing too hard at this point. It's still a hard jump out of the corners, though. You still have to make uh, the effort. The front of the field, the pace does pick up. And once again, Sydney Uni Staminade forcing the pace. But Ale Cipollini sitting quite comfortably in there. Look at that Sydney Uni Staminade bookending the bunch there. The youngster from Bathurst, Emily Watts. Rider number 146. Gee, she's excited to be here, Anna. She's like looking around at all her <laughs> idols and I think it's been overwhelming for her this week to ride and really rub shoulders with them. Absolutely. With this race being a UCI ranked race, we have the privilege of having some of the best international teams, but also we get to mix it with some of the domestic teams. We've got 15 teams out there for domestic teams. We've also got the pro team of Mitchelton Scott. So we get the opportunity of some of the youngsters in this country to have a race. And one of those youngsters, Emily Roper, sitting front left there. She's known as a climber, but she's taking responsibility here, uh, both for Rachel Nalan to try and sneak her onto that podium. She sits virtually in third at the moment, courtesy of that last sprint, but also Rebecca Wysak, their sprinter, who's further back in the field and looking after herself. There's a nice view from the grandstand there. They've gone out with 15 laps uh, left to go. Remember, this is a four-day race, which is culminating today in probably the next uh, 40 minutes or so. Just to quickly give you a run round the Adelaide Hills, stage one went from Horndorf to Birdwood, and that was won by the 19-year-old new superstar on the block, Letizia Paternoster from Italy. And then on the second day, the big race favourite uh, put the hammer down on the climb of Mengler Hill, where the race finished up at uh, outside of Angerston and Amanda Spratt taking control of the race. Her lead is almost a minute. It's uh, nearly impossible to lose that time on a circuit like this, but of course, there is that possibility that we don't want to see of an accident which would take her out of the race. And yesterday it was uh, Grace Brown, who, the Victorian national champion of Australia. She only had the title just over a week. Uh, she won the race yesterday into Stirling, sprinted clear of the field. And they're all in the centre of the city of Adelaide now, the capital of South Australia, showing uh, the people of South Australia their skills before they all fly away like the proverbial swallows and spend the rest of the year in Europe. Such beautiful lyrical descriptions of did the crowd like there, Phil. I did, yeah. I liked that. A uni essay still <laughs> taking responsibility <laughs> for the pace on the front. Emily Roper, Lauren Kitchen... And Anya Lowe, the youngster, the 18-year-old from Tasmania, she's right up there in third wheel. I think there's um, a few Tas proud Tasmanian fans here. Anna, they're always the loudest, aren't they? Well, that's our... Uh, well, except for your family <laughs> from say, North Queensland. The Queenslanders, they can have a bit of a vote. But the South Australians and all the fans, they're coming out here. Average speed so far, 37.3 kilometres an hour. So even though we've seen some of the women freewheeling, perhaps that's just the drafting effect that's happening within the bunch, Kate. Well, that's a decent clip to go along. It's 37 plus kilometres an hour. And it will only increase. Well, that's the average. That's we, not even the max speed no, that they're hitting We've seen time. a flurry yeah. of attacks, but um, for that average, you know, I think that this is going to start to wear and fatigue at the riders. Team Tibco rubbing shoulders up there. They're almost looking, are we attacking? Are we not attacking? Team Tibco having a bit of an attack, but it's almost a bit of a roll off the front. We'll come around for the sprint bell. Or is that the cowbells? Well, I think they're the cowbells. They shouldn't be up yet because it's at the next sprint is at the end of lap number 12, which we're just entering. So, yes, it'll be the end of this lap. Trek Sager Fredo are starting to group toward the front. They've got Aussie Loretta Hansen in there. She, the first woman to win the uh, Melbourne to Warrnambool. Quite an endurance cycling event, but she is a oh, sprinter. Oh, crash here as they were making. Now, that was a routine left-hander, but somebody's touched the wheel. That looks like Rachel Nayland from the Team Uni SA. Uh, it, is, it, is, it is Rachel, Rachel. Nayland. Well, she'll fortunate. be quite anxious. She's heading back to the team car. She's got to change her bike. Good to see that the women are up and, and moving. That's a good sign. And it was Pat Nostra as well, the youngster, the 19-year-old Italian who won on day one that also came down in that fall. That happened right at the front. Yes. That's a bit of nerves right there from the youngster and also from Rachel. Now, under the regulations, Kate, they get a lap of the circuit out. They and do. And they can rejoin the race at the point where they fell so they can go back in the main field with losing no time. Well, and Phil, I hope that Rachel um, is able to calm this down. This Alice Cobb here too. Now, she's been a, a really prominent rider over the four days. A chain is jammed. A little bit of panic there too. Well, the given the speed of some trying of to slow it down too. I'm not sure 
I am right in saying they get a lap out. They, they are. They do get a lap out. But it's so anxiety-inducing when yeah. it happens. And sometimes you're just not quite sure. And it, it does require, I think, really calm leadership telling them, you've got a lap, just calm down, get your breath back, get your bike ready. You can rejoin the race, Anna, from where you fell. So yeah. if you were in the breakaway, you can rejoin that. If you're in the main field and so on and so forth. Well, it's interesting, Kate, given that there's been a crash on this lap. The LA Cipollini, who have no one involved, Chloe Hosking going for the stage win today. Wow. They're on the front and driving the pace. I tell you, it should be a formality for Chloe now because she's uh, got rid of all the sprinters on, off this lap. Sir Roy might try and impress, but I think... Uh, She's going to look after Amanda Spratt. Remember, Amanda Spratt did just this a year ago. She fell and got back up and finally won the race overall, but it was a big shock. This rule doesn't apply towards the end of the race either. Here goes the sprint. Chloe's jumped a little bit late here. She's on the left of our picture. Now, I don't think she's going to get up for this one. It will have to be a second place on the line. And it looked to me like it was Sarah Roy who snatched that in the blue leader's jersey. So she's getting her own back. And that's keeping her in that blue jersey. Took a little bit of wind out of our sails there. Sarah Roy taking some pretty big, heavy, deep breaths over that. But they've got a little bit of an advantage because Paternoster, who is one of the favourites to win today if it comes down to a sprint, well, she fell last lap. Now, while they can rejoin the race, if the field's going exceptionally fast, it makes it a little bit tough. Rachel Nalen... Just going off right of screen there, rejoining the race. Just take a look at the uh, replay here. The action, Chloe Hosking, badly placed in the end. She shouldn't have been. She had a perfect lead out. And then a quick uh, fire like the Manx missile there. Mark Cavendish is shot out the back, Sir Roy. Chloe tried to take a back wheel, but that's all she could do. So the 20 points go to uh, Sir Roy and 17 to Chloe Hosking. And so uh, that battle continues. It was almost like Chloe Hosking got stuck on a wheel there. She uh, lost all of her momentum that her team had uh, put together, you know, getting her up there to the front, ready for that intermediate sprint. Sarah Roy, an unimpeded run all the way to the line. Well, yes. Sarah Roy's on great form. Phil, I think this is the best we've seen her. Yes, now Alison Jackson also crossed the line in third place, and she's the woman only two points behind Sarah Roy, except she's lost now uh, points there because she only gets 15 for third place. So she's dropped another five points to Sarah Roy. So that was a very good sprint for Sarah Roy. Arlay Cipollini got a big day out there because Chloe won here last year. Gee, she's a big fan of winning on home soil, the Commonwealth Games. She won Cadell Evans Great Ocean Road Race and, of course, the Classic as well and so pleased to win in front of her home crowd, Jessica Ramondi from Arlay Cipollini. Well, there's something about a hometown crowd, Kate, and we saw that uh, Chloe Hosking from the LA Cipollini team, she also won gold at the Gold Coast Commonwealth Games last year in 2018. So perhaps the set setting is really there for Chloe to step up today. So as the riders head up at the home straight again, we might see the women jump back into the race. So we're still around the finishing zone there as they leave Bartels Road at the top end. As you can tell from the helicopter here, they are absolutely flat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're on lap 15. Lap 15 of 25. So we've still got one more sprint out on course, and of course the big sprint before. Now this is where we had this accident coming off that bend there. And Rachel Nalen in the white jersey was one that went down. Patton Oster is the far right of our pick. No, she's the left picture here. And she was up and riding pretty quickly. And Anya Lau, the youngster from Tasmania, only 18 years of age. She only turned 18 in October last year, youngest in the race. Unfortunately, the Santos Women's Tour Down Under is over for her in 2019, which is sad. She's done so well this week. but well, She's nearly made the four days. There's be plenty more time for her. Well, on, on this tight circuit, they do pull the riders out very quickly, Anna. So if they're too far off the back, they'll pull them off the course to make sure... They do not impede the bunch in any way. Arle Cipollini, we may have another rider pulled out, Jessica Ramondi, that is. She's dropped off the back of the pace for a few laps now. Yes, as we look back to the main peloton, the Sydney Uni Staminade team on the front with Vantage New Zealand national team close behind, starting to roll through not too long after the last uh, intermediate sprint. And, and it doesn't take much, Phil, you know, just in this sort of tight street circuit races, it doesn't take much of a clipper wheel to see a crash. No, you've got to stay alert all of the time. And if you take a look down that straight, it's not a flat sprint to the finish. It's slightly downhill with an up uphill rise. So you must judge your final move to absolute perfection. Well... 2.35 is our lap time very consistently. They bettered that one, 
So they're just sticking to the same average all the time. I think heading into the finish, we can expect it to just come down lap by lap, but it is quite hot out there. And Anna, it's worth mentioning that they don't have access to food and nutrition like on the longest stages. So normally on a long road stage, after 50 kilometres or 20 kilometres on a hot day, the feed is open and they can grab cold water bottles or food, but today they have to take them all on their bikes. So I hope the riders have some nice chilled water bottles out there to keep them cool. Absolutely, and the heat has been one of the elements that has been a big factor in the Women's Santos Tour down under this year. Uh, we saw on stage two up Manglas Hill temperatures in the air were 39 degrees, but I was at the finish line and the bitumen itself was starting to melt, Phil, which means the road temperature mm. had to have been at least 55 degrees. And believe me, it's a terrible problem getting the, the bitumen out of your socks when you get back home as well. Did you know that? Do you often walk around in socks on hot bitumen? No, but it sprays up <laughs> off the road. <laughs> well, the ride is up against a lot. I mean, when we talk about the heat, while they're out there, the wind is quite chilling and cooling for them, but often you see uh, salt patterns on the back of their jersey, which is just from the perspiration uh, and losing salt. So it's so important for them to continue to ride, uh, to eat and drink while they're riding. Nearly 27 kilometres covered in just under 40 minutes. So it's certainly a respectable pace and all of the time as they keep the tempo here each of these women is planning the next move and where is their team leader the one they might want to try and put at the front for the final spin so they may look as though they're always circling in a big pack and indeed they are it's a matter of thinking what the next move is they're absolute computers these women the field led at the moment by Andrea Ramirez from the Swap It team the Mexican rider it's so Anna, it's so good to see the international teams come out. It's the first year the Mexican team has been here in Australia. And they said yesterday they've had a bit of a tough week. It's hotter than they imagined. But the, they said their favourite thing, the koalas and the kangaroos. <laughs> I think customs need to watch out. They might uh, try and pack some joeys in their back pockets to head home. Straight through uh, lap 17 they've gone on to now. And... As we've got the average speed a little bit higher now, added about three quarters of a kilometre, 38.5. Yeah, we see a lot of the athletes posing at the start line with some of the little joeys that come out from the um, native animal network, and uh, I got to pose with them as well. <laughs> and uh, not just the athletes, I saw you cuddling two of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Two was, one wasn't enough, Kate. As we look back at the peloton, you can see the heat haze starting to come off of the bitumen. It is not cool out there. Ozzy Loretta Hansen sitting to the right in the Trek Sega Fredo, the blue jersey with the white sleeves. She could win today, but they've got the young sprinter, Pater Noster. Uh, they came into the race with Lotta Lepisto, one of the world's best sprinters, but she pulled out uh, unwell early on in the race, unfortunately, and they changed their tactics. But, Bill, in the car, they've got Inayoko Teutenberg, who's won more sprints in professional women's cycling than any other rider so she's got pretty good guidance for them she is a, an absolute top and was a brilliant sprinter and she's passing that knowledge on and uh, Sven Teutenberg her famous brother was a pro as well for quite a long time but Ina just loves the sports she stayed in as long as she could beat them and then she's gone into team management a little bit of jostling at the front now. We saw the CC Lev team uh, starting to take control. Now they're starting to be overrun by the UniSA team. So perhaps you know, it's Rachel Nalen there. She she was caught up in the crash and she's interested in more sprint points. Well, I'm happy to see Rebecca Wysak, the ochre jersey there, number one, Amanda Spratt, in the green helmet for Mitchelton Scott. And she's just tucked in quite safely behind some other wheels. It's a great thing that we've barely seen her today. She's looking after herself and saving energy. But after that crash last year, I, for, I'm nervous, and I, I want to see her not just well, sit in behind any wheel. I really want to make sure she's on the right wheel to get through safely. We're all a bit nervous. We, we're all a bit excited. We want to see that three-peat happen, the hat trick. And really, they want to, Mitchelton Scott, want to give Amanda Spratt what they call an armchair ride. They don't want her mixed up in anything. They want, don't want her is. working too hard. She was just on the outside. They're very difficult to spot. I've watched out for all day today. The best way is to check out a number, number one, because her colours, the Oka Leaders jersey, it confuses with the CCC team of orange jerseys. Out onto lap number 18. This is the last sprint out before we race for the final finish. So another 20 points uh, available here. Sarah Roy took the last sprint and has uh, consolidated her lead. 
in the Blue Jerseys uh, competition for Zip Track. And the field's led by UniSA rider Rebecca Wysak. We've seen her on the back of the field a bit uh, in the pictures and she looks like she's rocking and rolling and a little bit uncomfortable, but she's been sent up to the front, summons to the front to help Rachel Nalen safely through this sprint. But Emily Roper just tucked in behind Wysak. They have to ensure that Rally UHC rider Doble Highcock, who was came in today tied for third with Nayland, does not get any sprint points and any bonus seconds. Uh, they're also an orange jersey, so we can see a lot of orange up the front here. Uh, one team is CCC Live and the other is Rally UHC Cycling. And in full flight, it's quite hard to differentiate between them. I'll tell you what, the Union say with me now with Wysak getting right onto the front, having been dangling off the back for over half of the race, is now really hurting these women. And as she should be, she's a two-time world individual pursuit champion on the track, so she can sit on the front and ride at pace all day long. And Elisa Longo Borgini for the Trek Sega Fredo team, and she has won some of the biggest one-day races in international cycling. Strada Bianchi, uh, the Italian... Her mother's oh, a, an Olympic cross-country skier, but uh, she said she got on the bike because she doesn't particularly like the cold. Her brother Paolo was top 10 here in 2008. Very special race for the Longo Borgini family. Rebecca Wiasak leading the field. Amanda Spratt tucked in just to left of frame, sitting behind Lucy Kennedy Mitchelton Scott. Yeah, she'll pick it up. She wears a lime green racing helmet. That's probably the best way to spot her. This is coming at 30.6 kilometres into the race. The overall distance is 42 and a half. All looking around as they start to open up the sprint here. Chloe Hosky is in the yellow and red jersey, still waiting to make a move. As uh, she jumps uh, over the top of that, and she made that one look rather easy, I think. Ahead of Sarah Roy this time in the blue, so she's got a couple of points back. Uh, but when we count it back, I think she's exactly where she was once before she started this last stage about 40-odd minutes ago. Sarah looks across there and spots it's Chloe Hosking right there with her. Rally UHC, they did quite a strong lead out for Doble Highcock, but she crossed the line in fifth. No bonus points for her, so on the road virtually at the moment, Rachel Nalen is still sitting in third place. We don't know how she's recovered uh, from that crash we haven't seen her again yet see here in the replay Chloe Husky much better run much cleaner run to the finish line and the top three women overall are Serda Roy Alison Jackson Chloe Hosking and across the line it was Chloe Hosking Serda Roy Alison Jackson they're spending so a lot of energy here though Phil yes of course because they've got the final sprint to look to and Pata Nostar, well she had a fall we don't know how she's recovered from that Chloe Hosking took that easily but you know, on the track in the points race, my coach used to always say to me, you don't need to win a sprint by more than a millimetre <laughs> because every bit of energy that you waste will cost you at the end of the race. So I hope for both Hosking and Roy uh, that they're not fighting so hard for this intermediate jersey uh, that they're compromising the sprint at the finish. Well, there's no more fighting left till that finishing sprint now because we are on lap number 19 of 25 of racing around the Adelaide Hills. We're looking down to the capital of South Australia, to Adelaide itself. The race has finally come home after its four-day tour. And in the ochre jersey, taking a drink, dead centre of picture, dipping in the out from behind. A teammate in that ochre jersey is Amanda Spratt. And now we can find her. The race is coming to its climax. She's being safely shepherded through. Lucy Kennedy on the front. Grace Brown, the winner from stage three. Quite a dominant win too. Uh, tucked in behind. Also Sarah Roy in the blue zip track sprinters jersey. So only four of our six Mitchelton Scott riders are actually wearing their stripe today. It can be quite hard to see the ochre jersey amongst the orange of the CCC live and the UHC uh, rally cycling. But Amanda Spratt, well, she's about half a foot shorter than any of the others. 165 centimetres She's just a tiny little climber and it can be easy for her to tuck right in and save a lot of energy. Well, that old adage, Phil, up, tr up front and out of trouble. <laughs> Absolutely, but you've got to have that little special thing called talent and strength. Well, in keeping out of trouble, Trek Sega Fredo are bringing their whole team up to the front. Loretta Hansen sitting in fourth there. Uh, she's the Aussie that was second on stage one here last year and she's been team captain out on the road. They won stage one with Letizia Paternoster. And they did say coming in that she was a very big talent, but she has had a fall today. And it's her first big international tour, so it will be interesting to see how 
the week has worn her legs. Not just the first big international tour for Letizia Paternoster, but for the Trek Sega Fredo women's team. So for them to come out in their first UCI race of 2019 and take a win in the Santos Tour Down Under, it was pretty remarkable. And she did it. I was, for a track sprinter, I was impressed with how much speed she had. Yeah, On because the... don't forget she did it because she lost, they lost their team leader before the race started, Lotta Lopesto, seven times the national champion of her country. She was sick, couldn't start. So the 19-year-old took her chance and won the stage for them. So they should be very happy. I think it's the genius of having Ina um, in the car, Ina Yoko Teutenberg. She not only brought a team here that had many options to win, uh, but when they did suffer the loss of Lopisto, she knows how to rally the troops. She really knows what to say to get them motivated and out on track. Loretta Hansen said that Ina has just changed all of them immediately. It's their first international race, but just the pre-race talks and the guidance gives them just so much confidence coming in. Yeah, 35 kilometres into the race, we're starting to see Nadia Corliotto from uh, Ale Cipollini, the queen, Subaru queen of the mountains, taking to the front, setting a bit of the pace, Phil. Yes, absolutely right. Uh, her job is done. She's won that title yesterday in the Subaru queen of the mountains. Now she can help her team try and get something off the stage. Well, they're into the final 10 kilometres now. They've been racing for 53 minutes out on track. Now is the time for the sprinters' teams to rally. Ale Cipollini, they've got Chloe Hosking. Normally, UniSA would have Rebecca Wysak, but she appears to be in a bit of trouble out on course. We're not quite sure what's going on uh, there. Of course, Mitchelton Scott, they want Sarah Roy up there. Wow. 39.9 kilometres average speed. Gee, they've really lifted. I think they'll head up over the 40 kilometre mark. And that's just average speed. I would expect that to be the case now, which means we're probably watching them race at around 43, 44, maybe even up towards 50 kilometres in the right sections of the course. And they're not going. The reason they're going faster, of course, is to try and stop the other teams bringing their riders to the front, because they're going to have to go even quicker to put the riders in position. Four laps to go. The sprinters need their helpers to guide them through the pack. It's such a mentally anxious time, this point in the race, because you want to regroup and have a bit of a deep breath and, and make sure that you're feeling fresh for the finish, but you also need to maintain your position. This is where teamwork really, really comes into play, and having your teammates look after you, shepherd you through, not just physically blocking the wind, but also giving you that reassurance to know that it's a safe wheel that you're on, that you can just focus on following that, and they will deliver you into the perfect position. A little bit different to how you sprinted on the track, Anna. Just slightly. There was only one other person that I had to worry about. There's a few other elements that are out of of your control on and the you road. certainly weren't hoping for them to put you in the right position. Oh, absolutely not. I had to put myself in the right position. But uh, we start to see the speed come up because all of the sprinters team are getting organised now. They all want to be at the front. They all want to get their rider into the best position for the best opportunity to launch towards that finish line. Well, on the top briefly along the famous terraces of Adelaide where this race, uh, not the women's race, but the men's race, which will be starting its first uh, Demonstration race, if you like, with the Down Under Classic shortly after the women finish today. And you can follow it live with us later. But we're watching here, the riders now go into that straight again. That'll be a crucial corner, but not that crucial because it's a long way, basically downhill to the finishing line with a slight kicker as you come to the line itself. It must be judged perfectly. The bunch led by Trek Sagafredo and it's the American Taylor Wiles at the front, incredibly experienced rider and very well known for the beginning of the lead out. She's got a lot of very good time trial ability and yeah. she's a bit of a diesel engine so they love to put her on the front early and just get her to keep the pace high and it is, you can see the front of the peloton, it's like an arrowhead which just indicates that they're moving on at quite a lot of speed. The front couple of riders in a lead out chain they often just rotate, making sure the pace doesn't drop. It won't be unusual, Anna, to see those riders drop off as we come into the final few kilometres. Absolutely, and as you well, say... We've done it, by the way. Well, we've just tipped over average speed, 40.2 kilometres an hour, and that will continue to increase as we get closer to the finish. But as you were saying, Kate, that diesel engine is essentially a rider that can get to that speed and not fluctuate. That makes it very steady for all the women following that wheel, and that is absolutely crucial with at these speeds. Now, it's interesting what's happening here. Trek Sega Freight on the right of screen leading the way but on the left of screen we've got another train forming from Arle Cipollini and Mitchelton Scott. The 
reasonably inefficient way uh, for the riders in behind them. They have to choose a line. But it shows the confidence of Trek Segafredo to take control and it almost shows the desperation of Ale Cipollini to try and one-up them and get ahead. It also gives them the inside run, Kate, the left-hand side of the road into the corners. That's the better positioning on the road. But you've got to be careful because if you dive into a corner on that tight inside line and then you swing out the whole bunch compressors, that's where Amanda Spratt got into trouble last year. I really don't want to see that happening Which again. Which is why you see Mitchelton Scott on the right-hand side. Yeah, you've got the Trek Segafredo women. They've pulled it back across the road now, but they are really piling the pressure on. Now, we saw Leticia Paternoster crash, and clearly she must be fine, otherwise they wouldn't be putting this amount of work in like this. Absolutely. She would have got a message across to her team captain and her, and her teammates and said, look, I'm good, I've hit the deck, but I've had my lap out, I've regained myself, and she has had a few laps to regain composure. Yeah, that's, it. that's certainly to her advantage. And right tacked on to the rear of the Trek team now, is the overall race leader, Amanda Spratt. And she's quite capable of taking this stage out, although I think uh, there might be a couple of women a bit quicker, but we'll see how it pans. Absolutely, Phil. Well, we tipped over into the 40 kilometres an hour for average speed. The peloton starting to string out again. Trek Segafredo, they're still on the front. They're still driving. They're taking control as they come in to 23 laps completed. Well, their team director, Eni Yoko Tortenberg, of course, the world-famous sprinter, she loved a good lead-out. She loved a good, organised lead-out. And she liked to know that she could come to the finish line just in the perfect position. Interesting move. The field really need to respond very quickly. Anna, the gap is opening up slightly. I can't see Trek Segafredo letting this go on any further because it's just absolute danger territory when they get into this. And that's this. rider number 83 from DVE, uh, Tetiana Rybchenko. Now, she was very animated in the... Uh, she was animated in the uh, stage uh, for the Queen of the Mountains on stage three. So Ryabchenko, she's not letting them have oh. it all their own way. Hats off to her because that is a pretty strong move. She's clearly not a sprinter. I'll, I'll confess I've never even heard of her. But uh, she's not a sprinter, so she's trying to go for it and good for her. That's the way. And that's going to upset the rhythm of some of the sprint teams now. They don't want to be starting to chase someone with just a couple of laps left to ride. One and three quarter laps to go. And that's a nice gap. Very nice gap. She's a very strong rider. She was very commanding out on the road earlier this week, Phil. Trek Segafredo, though, Trek Segafredo, though, they have her in their sights. They're not panicking. They know they still have a lap and a half to go before they need to really start to rein in that gap. Peloton stretched out now. Can start to see the bright yellow jerseys of Ale Cipollini. That means Chloe Hoskins. She's starting to move herself to the front. Amanda Spratt of the Oka jersey and Mitchelton Scott. She's still in the mix. They're doing a good job of keeping her well up the front and out of trouble. She learned learning a lot from last year's experience. And she said at the national championships after she picked up the silver, she's still learning. Well, they've come back on that. The two-time national champion of the Ukraine. Last one her title back in 2015, but she's been put back in the pack, back in her place. And Trek Segafredo have got themselves in control of the peloton again. But Chloe Hoskin and the Ellie Cipollini team off to the left of our picture in yellow and red, perfectly poised at the bell to come out of that slipstream. Well, are we going back four days now? I'm going to see a battle between Letizia Paternoster, this 19-year-old wonder woman, and maybe Chloe Hoskin. Hoskin, remember, Kate? Um, Anna, sorry, they, she won here a year ago. Absolutely. But Chloe Hoskin, very familiar with this racing circuit. We actually start to see Amanda Spratt. She's in front of Sarah Roy, so she's not just keeping herself out of trouble. She's starting to form the lead-out train for her own sprinter from Mitchelton Scott.
Well, it was Josie Talbot led them through there. Spratty, Amanda Spatter moved up. Hey, the average speed has catapulted into the roof now. 42.7 kilometres an hour average for the stage. These last five or six laps have been very, very quick indeed. And watch out too for Lisa Longo-Borghini also. She went through there on third wheel, just ahead of the blue jersey of Sarah Roy. And there's Sarah Roy now. The Mitchelton Scott team have had a perfect race so far. They're not going to lose control of it now. They're guiding Amanda Spratt safely towards the finish she doesn't need to win she doesn't need to finish anywhere she just needs to finish safely and yet she's moved into second wheel here to try and keep control of the riders Taylor Wiles has got herself up to the front now swung off to the left as the overall race leader shortly to be the race winner Amanda Spratt has just shown off her colours now we had trouble finding her for half an hour now it's easy well she's starting to fill a position of riding for for the team, the team has been riding for her the last four days. I've moved now from Trek Sayer That was a bit of a tight one too. Yeah. That was more like something you'd have done on the track. <laughs> I like a bit of elbow, Phil. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that means Nadia uh, Podonosta, the young 19-year-old, she really wants to take this win. Who's going to take it, Phil? Well, that's a very good point, but uh, Chloe Hoskins still perfectly poised here to pop out of the shadows when she wants to. Uh, Trek Segafredo trying to lead out Padden Oyster here. As they continue to, it's Sarah Roy trying to get in on the act, but a big rush up on the outside here. And this looks like a Barbieri who's coming through, but Chloe Hoskin making a final run for the line. And she goes over the top of Rachel Barbieri and gets the win for the second year in a row. Sarah Roy, I think, was tucked in there to finish third. And in the end, uh, and wisely done, I must say, Amanda Spratt stayed out of that sprint, but she has won the Santos Tour Down Under, and she's won it for a third year in succession. Well, we actually witnessed a bit of history there, Phil. The third uh, win in a row for the Women's Santos Tour Down Under for Amanda Spratt of Mitchelton Scott. She will claim the ochre sprint jersey, the leader's jersey, I'm sorry. Chloe Hosking, we're seeing vision of here, her here, being congratulated by a teammate. That was a great stage four win. She likes it here, Phil. She's won for the second year in a row for stage four, the city circuit around the Adelaide East End. Uh, what a race. There was all sorts of speed and moves. No one could stay away. Lots of jostling at the front by all the sprint teams. And Amanda Spratt, not only was she being worked for by her team throughout the week but she became a worker in the end today well the women having a warm down lap but there in the center and just taking a well-earned drink is Amanda Spratt she is having the best years of her racing career last year she was superb second in the world road race championship now she's running out here at the start of the 2019 season as the winner for the third year in a row of this event and she just gets better and better. She does, absolutely. Very, very exciting. And oh, what a great turnout for the crowd as well watching this. As we go through the replay, we see Chloe Hosking. She's third in line, fourth in line at the moment. Um, she's sitting in there nicely tucked. Sarah Roy from Mitchelton Scott, she's on her wheel. We see Barbara Ray from the um, uni, Sydney Uni uh, Staminade team. She makes a move very, very early. Padanoska, she's out number 24. Chloe Hosking, she squeezes between the two of them and she launches towards the line, throws. What a win. Well, just looking on the right yeah. of the picture there, you're quite right, it is Lake Leticia Paternoster, but she hasn't come up on the camera at all, but it looks like she is in second place, uh, as we can clearly see here from these pictures. Natalie Beaton on this occasion, and then a pretty massed finish there for the third and fourth places. Uh, but Paternoster not showing up on the computer, so maybe after the crash uh, she lost her transponders and so the camera's not found it. That will be amended, of course. So let's have a look at the results here. And there, uh, that's confirmed. Chloe Hoskin gets the win, second year in a row for her. Patton Oster won the opening stage, gets second this time, despite a crash today. Barbiera in third place, Sarah Roy in fourth place, but she's done enough to win the zip track points. But there is the woman who has won the race in the Oka jersey. She claimed it on the second day with that definitive showing at Mengler Hill and she was never troubled after that. There wasn't anybody in this race with a thought Amanda Spratt would lose this race and in the end she wins by 47 seconds over Rachel Nalen, the ever-consistent Australian. 
Doval Hickok, uh, Krista from the United States in third, Lucy Kennedy in fourth. So Mitchell and Scott getting two in the top four there. Alison Jackson for Tipco Silicon Valley. That's a good result for her too in fifth place. Well, they really didn't uh, wait around this circuit today. In the end, an average speed of over 42 and a half kilometers an hour. That was where Paternoster went down. She remounted and almost got the top and tail win. She won in stage one. Chloe Hosking and our overall winner. What a ride, what a season that's shaping up to be for Australia's Amanda Spratt. Quite remarkable by both the girls. Great crowds, there is celebration down here at the finish line. Let's go down to Kate. Just a little bit of a problem there with Kate's audio for now. We'll get back to her in just a moment, but a spectacular finish and the crowds have been rolling in all afternoon. Of course, don't go anywhere because we've still got the men's Down Under Classic coming your way this afternoon on seven. And uh, just a fantastic place to be this afternoon. The sun is shining in oh, wow. South Australia. Yeah, yeah, we saw Temperature that. in we saw its 30s. Let's go back to Kate now. Chloe, you're a big fan of winning on home soil. You won here last year. You've backed it up. What an incredible sprint. Yeah, thank you. I, I sort of second-guessed myself a bit in the first stage and have been frustrated with myself ever since. So I really committed to following my instinct today and I, I, I really wanted uh, Trek's wheel. They had a super strong lead out. So I feel like I executed mine and the team's plan perfectly and we came away with the win. So yeah, you can't ask for more. Well, you've always said that the Italians celebrate better than the Aussies. Uh, it's such an incredible victory. Your team looked after you so well coming into that final lap. Yeah, yeah, we sort of we sort of knew that we didn't have the full firepower to do the full gas lead out in the last lap. So I asked the girls to be there with five laps to go to keep me up and out of trouble, and that's exactly what they did. So, uh, yeah, what can you say? I feel like it's not every day a race goes perfectly, and today it is. So we'll savor the moment and just so we can remember next time it doesn't go perfectly. Well, that was absolutely sensational. You put on such a good show for the crowds. Chloe Hosking, congratulations. Thank you very much. Amanda Spratt, you've done the three-peat. What an incredible victory. Oh, I'm so excited and so thankful to my whole team. I'm much more smooth sailing than the crit last year. Stayed upright and um, really fun to be involved in the end that they're trying to help out Roy. And just how special is it to be able to take another victory here in Adelaide? Essentially home soil. You've got family here and so many Aussie fans behind you. Oh, it's so special. I mean, when I sat down with my coach, Dean Bates, in October last year, he asked me what my goals were and the first thing I said was to win the Tour Down Under. It's a home race for an Australian team. It's really, really special. Mum and Dad are here. I've got people from Blue Mountains here as well. It's really special. And you guys executed perfectly. Lucy Kennedy, an incredible ride. Grace Brown, of course, yesterday. Your team has just been absolutely on point. Yeah, it's great. And I think that's what I'm really loving is it's not just one rider getting results. You know, everyone in the team is strong in their own right. And yet when we really come together for a team goal, everyone's just executing it and committing. So it's wonderful to be a part of. And Spratty, just how important is the Tour Down Under in your season? Oh, it's really important. I love the race. It's the best way to, to start out. It's a big goal for me and I just really love and I'm proud of how much the race is growing in Australia. Well, we've loved watching you and we're so proud to see you take that Oka jersey. Congratulations. Thanks, Thanks very much. Well, what a memorable day for Australian cycling. Well done, Amanda Spratt, our overall winner, and Chloe Hosking taking the stage. Both of them have had fantastic tours, so congratulations to the girls. And remember, this really sets up their year ahead, being the opening event of the UCI World Tour. It is so important on the world stage and getting them up and running. A reminder, we'll be making a channel change not too far away from 7 till 7, mate, but just keep an eye on that. We'll let you know as that's coming up as well. But joining me now, and, and this event takes so much effort, so much work to put on, the South Australian Government does an incredible job getting behind it and South Australian Premier Stephen Marshall joins me now. Steve, great to have you here. What we've just seen in, in the women's is testament to how good this event is. I mean, the women's event grows and now we're seeing great Australian talent coming up and winning it. Look, it's an absolutely fantastic event and it really showcases the very best that we have here in Australia. It was great to see Amanda Spratt go three in a row. Yeah, so fantastic. absolutely fantastic. Mitchelton Scott, uh, fantastic team and of course Sarah Roy took out the uh, 
sprinter's jersey today uh, overall uh, for the uh, for the series. So that's absolutely fantastic, and it provides, if you like, a, a real role model for younger uh, female cyclists right across the nation to see the see the very best of the world come to Adelaide. Uh, Premier, one of the great things about being here at the moment is getting around the city and around the precincts and seeing so many people out and about on bikes. This really is a great state and a great city to come to for a, a bike riding adventure, a bike riding experience, if you like. We absolutely love hosting this event. Uh, it's always pretty warm in, uh, in Adelaide in January, but the city comes alive. We have about 10,000 people that join us from interstate, from around the world, and I think that we put on a great show representing uh, Australia and it has a massive effect on our economy because they don't just come for the race, but there's so many other uh, events that are held. People go to our wineries, they go to our beaches, they sometimes cycle themselves uh, in one of the, uh, the races that are sort of allied with the uh, Festival of Cycling. And this event also, it's not only about what happens here in Adelaide, but it just takes people on a show, a showcase if you like, of what this region, what the state has to offer. Absolutely. When you look at some of the visuals that are, are, are beamed out across the world from the tour down under, I mean, you couldn't pay for that sort of uh, <laughs> visual to go out because people, uh, you know, the cyclists are, uh, are in the country one day, they're down at the beach the next day, they're in the city. So it's a really great showcase. And the Santos Tour Down Under has been a, a great event uh, for Australia, but absolutely particularly for South Australia, promoting this this place as a, as a destination to come back and enjoy at other times of the year. Yeah, and we're just seeing some beautiful pictures of the Flinders Ranges and Kangaroo Island, which is one of the most beautiful places on earth, of course. The wineries that South Australia is so famous for. But Premier, what's what's the message? What would you like people who are coming to South Australia or visitors who are here now to, to know about South Australia and, and to experience about the state? Well, I think South Australia is a, is a great spot. Uh, we've got a growing economy here in South Australia. In fact, if we look at a lot of the metrics around the, the country at the moment, there's a growing confidence uh, in this state. I think that's really, um, I mean, an event like this is emblematic of what we can achieve. We can really mix it with the very best in the world, uh, put on an event like this, but there's plenty to see, plenty to do in South Australia. So to anybody that's watching, Come over to South Australia, we'd love to have you here. It is going to be a great week. You can come and enjoy it. There's plenty of room here. Uh, people who I've bumped into have been not only from South Australia, but right across Australia and international guests as well. It is a remarkable event. And to think that we kick off the world tour here in Australia, in South Australia each year, is fantastic. Premier, thank you. Great to have you here and congratulations on a great event. Thanks, Mark, and thank you for coming to Adelaide. I know you've just got off a plane from the UK. <laughs> well done. A bit of a change of temperature for you. Thank you, Premier. I'm going to enjoy it.